Hi and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be unboxing and reviewing Dom's watercolor tubes. This one is a set of 12 shades. It comes with one brush, one color palette with this pack so it's pretty interesting. This one here is the color palette. Um, so I'm excited to use this tiny one. I'm guessing it's plastic. So I got this for INR 100 on um, Amazon. You can check your nearby stores or on Amazon uh, if you want to get this. So let's go ahead, unbox this and check out how the colors are. So this is what the packaging um, looks like for our paints and this is the one for the palette. Uh, so it does say over here that it is a plastic color palette. So let's unbox the paints and the tubes first and then we'll use the palette. If you've seen my earlier videos you would have seen um, the Dom's cakes. So I'm quite excited to try out um, these paints. So this is what it looks like inside. I think um, the packaging is really good. It's quite sturdy. It's not a very cheap plastic. Like it, it is quite nice. The packaging of the colors also look good and they have an interesting brush. I was expecting, um, to be honest, I was expecting kind of a bad brush. I didn't think that they would have a fairly average or a good bristle. Um, like they have over here so this it says it's synthetic hair um, and it looks like a size 2 so let's try painting with this also it has a space over here to keep and store your brush so that is a very good interesting feature that they have for the price that we are paying I think this is really nice so here are the colors this one is um, lemon yellow and um, I have to see now how much of ml is there inside this. So each is 5 ml. So that's how much you'll have. So you'll have about um, 12 shades. There is lemon yellow, then there is carmine, there is burnt sienna, there is orange, um, there is this chrome green, it looks really bright. There's the cobalt blue, and then there's the yellow ochre, there is the viridian hue, the Prussian blue, the mauve, the white, and the black. So we have very interesting 12 colors and the packaging is also really nice. We're going to now unbox the palette and see how that looks. This is a very, very cute palette. This has about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine tiny wells and one very big well. So this over here, you may not be able to really use as a well. So this is for you to hold the palette. So you place your thumb over here. So it really is easy if you're just holding it and then you take your brush you mix your colors. You can even put water over here. So you can just take the water from here, dip it into your colors. Or you could use this for like mixing uh, multiple colors together or if you want like a larger quantity. So feel free to use it as you want. But I like uh, that it's really compact and nice. So if you have to see the size, it's almost like a little more than half of this. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to try out every individual shade and on uh, 300 GSM watercolor sheets. And after that, we'll make a tiny, beautiful painting. So I've got my uh, 300 GSM watercolor sketchbook and I have these paints. So I'm going to start off with the first one. Um, I'm going to be using another water cup so that I can use this for mixing of my colors. So let's take each one of these colors, add some water and figure out what their consistency is. So it's pretty liquid. So it comes out quite easily from um, the cap. I'm going to use the same Dom's brush. So the first time you get this brush, it will seem like it's very stiff, especially at the edges. And that's how it's supposed to be because there would be some gum. Once you add the gum, you will see that it's really flexible. So I'm going to now, oops, <laughs> that's the plastic. So we're going to now use the yellow. So the one issue with plastic palettes you'll have is it will be very shaky. 
because it's very lightweight so this is the problem with most of them so um if you're not a beginner if you're an intermediate level or somebody who's moving from intermediate to professional or someone who's trying to move from beginner to intermediate then i would like you um to check out ceramic palettes because that's pretty useful um it will not move like this so let's take the yellow and let's see how that is I'm going to just take a little bit of water and brush this down. I love how this is. The gradient is pretty amazing. Um, since this is a lighter color, you may still not be able to appreciate this at, uh, as much. So I'm going to now move on to the next color, which is the carmine. You'll probably be able to see a lot more uh, then. So if you notice, I add the colors to the edge of the palette okay so this is always a good idea I will tell you why so when you're using watercolors you just take like a dot of color first add it in the middle and then add some water to it so if you add this entire blob in the center you will have to add that much water it will be very opaque so you don't want that in your watercolor you need a very flowy a transparent consistency which is why um, you have to take like very little color first and you can keep topping up but then when you, if you add too much of a color in the beginning it becomes really difficult for you to adjust it because uh, a lot of color will go away so let's now test out the carmine it's quite nice you can see it's not cakey i'm going to use a little bit of water to drag the color down it's not leaving any residue. I'm able to do a nice gradation. Um, even though this is student range, I think uh, the way it's working is quite nice. I like these slightly better than the cakes, I think, already. In general, that's how it is with most of the student grade tubes and versus cakes. But um, I think this is quite a good one. So let's try the next color. The next one I have over here is the Burnt Sienna. I'm going to go through the exact same thing now and if you're somebody who's very new to watercolors I hope this um, close-up helps you to understand how much water to add so I'm still adding quite uh, less water and more color so I want to get like a darker shade first so that I can show you the gradation brushing the water off just taking a little bit of water in my brush and gradating it down so you can see that in darker colors it's not an extremely smooth consistency you just have to go over it again but it's still not very bad moving on now to the orange Another thing is you don't have to wash your palette off after every use. Uh, you can always reactivate the colors, which is um, a wonderful thing in watercolors. You can carry like a small spray bottle and just have, uh, add water. Just spray it on all of these colors and then it'll just activate back again. So if you do the gradation pretty quickly, like I did this time with the orange, you can notice that uh, the gradation is pretty smooth. I'm moving on now to the chrome green. So sometimes you will get this um, watery consistency that comes out, especially if you're going to be using it for the first time. And that's completely normal. So those are... Um, things that they, are, they, they use in uh, paints and tubes. So don't worry about that. So I'm going to just now mix a little more water. So you, you would have seen that a lot more color fell in the center, which is why I've had to use a lot more water than the rest. So this is a little different consistency, this particular green than the rest. It's a little more cakey, I think. There's some amount of like um, texture in it. But then once you add a little more water, it is okay. It's usable. The next one is the cobalt blue. This is the sixth color that we are using. Um, so far, I would say I'm pretty impressed with the colors. Uh, the consistency is very good of all of them. Um, also, what I really like is um, the brightness of the colors. 
if you are a beginner or if you're looking uh, to get this for your kids or get it as gifts for somebody you know even for like a birthday party and you want to get like gifts for everybody then i think this is a wonderful way to start and if you're looking to start your uh, art journey then um it's a good point to start over here of course i would still say that don't expect um to do wonders the first time it's never the end product it's always the process that's more important so just remember to have fun this is the chrome so whenever there's a lot of color you will notice that this texture would be there so you just need to add a little more water it means that it's you've added a little less water so now i'm taking it more you can see it's such a beautiful gradation so many colors you can see normally i'm not a person who likes chrome a lot um, i feel like the color is too muddy but i like how this one is the next one i'm going to is the viridian hue we will be running out of um, wells but that's okay we'll manage This is a nice dark color. I like that all of the colors are in the same family. Um, they aren't. They're all going really well together. So that way it's quite good. The next one here is the Prussian blue. So I'm adding it on this corner also so I can utilize the entire palette. If you're a travel artist or if you're somebody who wants to do urban sketching or if you want to just pick your paints and take it with you when you're traveling somewhere, uh, this palette is so good for that. Such a tiny palette with multiple wells is good. And, and the wells are quite deep. It's not like um, you will not be able to utilize them or you know, you'll have to keep refilling them. You'll not have that issue. The Prussian blue is really good too. And the mauve. So normally I have noticed that uh, student range colors don't really have like uh, mauve or purple. But I'm kind of happy to see this color over here. It's very strong. Um, let's see how it looks. It's one of the strongest colors of the entire palette. There is, you would have noticed there is no primary colors over here. Like there is no red. Um, it's a common thing to happen in student colors, so don't get worried if you suddenly open your set and you feel like that's not there. Uh, if you have primary colors, it is very useful for you to create and mix more colors, uh, but you will still be able to do that with this set. So um, for beginners, I think it's pretty okay. It's not a bad deal. This is the black. So I'm not going to do the white because I think uh, you'll not really be able to see much on the screen. But um, I'm assuming it's going to be perfectly fine. That was a little too much of water. So, okay. All right. So here are all of my colors. I um, really like them. So far, my verdict would be a definite thumbs up for these colors. So we have about 12 colors in this shade and I'm going to wait for a couple of minutes uh, to make sure this dries so that I can show you what it looks like on the reverse side of the paper. This is a 300 GSM very thick paper. This is meant for watercolors. Even though we are using student grade paper, I do not want to compromise on the uh, student color paints. I don't want to compromise on the paper. So now what if you are a beginner and you want to use um, paper and uh, you're on a budget so in that case you could try out this brand called Canson and that has very good watercolor sheets 300 GSM and it's pretty affordable on the pocket as well um, if uh, you want to know more details about different kinds of papers you could leave your uh, requests or you could leave your questions in the comment section over here and I would uh, get back to you in the future videos that I create so this is almost dry right now. My black is the only one which hasn't dried, but most of the others have. So if I were to turn the page, you would notice that it does not go through. So that way it is really nice. The color is not bleeding. It's also to do with the paper, uh, which is why it is very important for us to have good watercolor paper. Even if you're a beginner, you should use good watercolor sheets so you can enjoy the medium. So what we'll do right now is we'll make a very quick sketch and we will use these colors and uh, make a beautiful painting. 
now that this has dried let's create a tiny flowers and we'll use all of these colors i love the bright colors which is part of um, this palette so i think our flowers is going to look quite cute and pretty so i'm just going to address the camera so you can draw along with me even if you don't have the same paints uh, you can just draw this use whatever colors you have you could use your crayons you could use your pencils anything that you want to and uh, we can create something so i'm drawing it quite lightly because these are watercolor um, sheets and um, i don't want it to become too dark um, sometimes what happens is when you draw very dark with your uh, pencil when you add water it will smudge along um, so i'm still drawing it pretty dark <laughs> more than what i would normally but uh, feel free to create anything that you feel like in your own style or um, if you're a beginner follow me draw the same thing and have a great time doing that so let's just add one more flower so these are just random flowers that i'm adding it's it's not something that um, i'm picking off from real life uh, they could exist they could not exist it, it doesn't matter uh, we'll just create something beautiful to see so here is my very quick sketch I'm going to use the same brush and uh, we'll mix in the colors and we will start painting. So I'm going to use some yellow right now, like um, for sunflower. So I'm just dropping color. We'll do wet on wet on this, um, wherein I'll have the base yellow and I'll just pick some yellow ochre and drop it over there. So it'll give a little bit of uh, shade so they can just like the colors can merge in with each other. There's no right or wrong way of doing these. So if your um, final output looks different from mine, don't worry at all about it. It's completely all right. Make sure you have a tissue or a cloth with you always when you're painting. Um, so all the excess water can be removed. So I'm just going to add some green leaves. I will add the other color also on top of this so that we get um, at least like some gradation. So what do you do if you're not very quick? So in that case, you will just wash your brush, take a little bit of water and remove the excess water with your hand or tissue and just merge these colors together. So I'm going to show it again, just taking a little bit of water, merging at that point where these two are meeting. You don't have to push it around too much. There will be a lot of factors that would affect um, the final output, especially if you're doing uh, watercolors. It, it would also depend on like um, the moisture in the air where you're sitting and if you're sitting directly under the fan or um, directly under the AC. Uh, so there would be quite a bit of factors. So don't worry too much if it's not the same way that you had in your mind in the beginning and it looks a little different. It That's completely okay because you don't always have control. So slowly you will get to learn. Each time you can just experiment and uh, try out different environmental factors. So I've added yellow ochre and then I put some orange and now I'm just adding some dots of brown on it. For this one, we'll do probably a carmine because it looks a little pinkish. So I'm just adding a little bit of color on the edge and I'm going to take some water and just do some gradation. So gradation is where, uh, like I was showing the individual colors in the beginning, I was just adding a little bit of color and then taking water to drag the color out. So you get like a nice ombre effect from a light uh, dark to a light color or vice versa. So if I feel it's too light, I can just top it up by adding a little more color. So in watercolors, you always go from light to dark. You cannot go in the reverse way. Um, it's because these are translucent and also they get activated as soon as you touch water. So if I add a little bit of water over here, it will get activated. So I won't be able to really make this any lighter. And for this flower, I want to make it blue so i'm adding more towards the bottom and what we will do is use some water and just gradate it 
so since i've been a little slow in this my uh, base colors have dried out but since these are flowers i think it still looks really nice so um i'm okay with that so what we'll do right now is for the pot i'm going to make it brown so i'm going first with the lighter color good to know a little bit of shadow um details this is a slightly smaller brush um so in larger areas you'll have to be a little quick otherwise uh, you would get like these cabbage effect it's called or you know it will not be very consistent and smooth so uh, you just have to be careful about that but then you know if that's your style and you like it that way go ahead there are no rules in painting i'm also going to be using a pen um a black pen in the end to add uh, some outline you can go as many layers as you want now again this uh, going as many layers as we want will depend on your paper if it is 300 gsm then yes your paper can take it but if it is below 300 gsm like 220 180 you cannot do a lot of layers so your paper can't um, take that absorb that much of water and uh, it will start to buckle or it will start um, coming off like you could see it's tiny pieces of fragments of paper coming out so you have to be a little careful about that so i've added some details here uh now i'm not going to be adding brown uh, to this because i'm going to be using a black paper so i'm just going to wait a couple of minutes for this to dry out and then we'll add the outline to it so my colors have dried out really fast i uh, love that after drying out also they are pretty bright it is not chalky you can see uh, the consistency it's pretty good it looks really nice for um, the price that we have paid for it it is in fact i think even better uh, than uh, expected so i'm quite happy about that so the pen that i'm going to be using to outline it is a 0.8 pigment liner by brustro you can use a sketch pen also but it will be a little thick so make sure that uh, the tip is not too thick if it is then your drawing has to accommodate it in the beginning uh, you can use any other pen as well but just make sure that it's completely dried before you add the outline in case it is not a waterproof pen even if it is waterproof um it will like tend to create like smudge a little bit here and there so just always ensure that it's completely uh dried out so i'm going to add in details i hope you enjoyed um this tutorial so far i love unboxing new art supplies figuring out what are the new things that are there in the market all the interesting things which are um, available whether it's for adults whether it's for kids um, i think it's amazing all the nice things that have come up i remember growing up uh, with very few um, art supplies and um, not access i think you know and it was the access which was a little difficult um, so i am quite happy about um, the variety of art supplies that's available today and i think doms has been kind of uh, one of those supplies which have been um really good very surprisingly good so i'm just switching over my pen because i think uh, the ink in this is not very good i should have checked that before starting so the one i'm using right now is a uniball air micro this is not a waterproof pen i use it most of uh, the time for my doodling um, but um, it's going to be working perfectly fine over here because the base is dry if the base hadn't dry then it would have messed up the entire painting all right so so you're now in um, an era i think we are all in an era right now which um the access to beautiful things is quite easy we have the internet we have um a lot of mediums we have home delivery so it doesn't matter which part of the world you are in you can still get to access all the best art supplies and try out different things and figure out um what works for you another beautiful thing is you don't really have to use any of the art supplies in the way um there's no one conventional way to use it so you can just use it any any way that you like whatever works best for you so if you've liked this video so far do consider subscribe to my to my channel if you're new over here and you can also hit the bell icon so you can get uh, notifications every time i put up a new video if you have some specific uh, tutorials in your mind then you can leave them uh, the request here in the comment section so i can get uh, to them 
um, if that's something which I can work on. You can also follow me on Instagram to know more about my art studio, about my day-to-day -day art life. So that's the place where I add those details. You can also, I think, give a small face to this. I think this looks really cute. And I'm going to just sign this. Remember to always sign anything that you create. It doesn't matter if it's a small thing, if it's a big thing, whatever it is. I think it um, makes a lot of difference. And it gives you the feeling of um, joy. So here is uh, the final painting. I'm going to also show you a close up towards the end where um, you can see how the paints have dried. I Finally, I think uh, I would say the colors are amazing. It is absolutely um, one of those things that I would highly recommend it to you for the price of 100 uh, rupees INR. I think these are the perfect way to kickstart. If you are looking between tubes and cakes, I would recommend you to still go for the tubes uh, because the quality of the paints or the pigments will be slightly better when it's in the case of a tube and uh, 5ml is pretty good enough for you to make lots of paintings and especially if you're a beginner it's, it's perfect. This also comes with a really good handy palette so that's even better. I'm not going to be washing these out. I will be able to reuse this multiple times right now till the paints get over so that way you get to use maximum um, you get the maximum out of uh, the paints that you have. So thank you so much for joining me for today's video. I hope this was very informative and helpful for you. And I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.